Hello everyone. Recently, Karnataka board released two model question papers. In this video, we are going to discuss about chemistry questions from those model question papers for SSLC. Let's get started. In this video, we will discuss chemistry questions from model question paper two. And here is Dinesh Kandipalli. When a copper is exposed to air for a long time. it acquires a green coat so this green color coating is basically the formation of a mixture in order to understand that mixture we need to know the reaction involved over here and the mixture here is copper hydroxide and copper carbonate copper hydroxide and copper carbonate are formed when copper is exposed to moist air So what do you mean by moist? Moist is basically in the presence of water, and not only the water in air we will have carbon dioxide and CO2, and when all three of them react, then we are going to get a mixture which is basically copper hydroxide and copper carbonate, and this mixture is responsible for this green coating. So here, moist carbon dioxide is the correct answer. number of single and double bonds present in a structure of benzene so let us understand the structure of benzene so now this is the structure of benzene if you carefully observe there are six carbon atoms and all of them are connected by alternate double and single bonds and every carbon has to have four bonds so the fourth one is basically with hydrogen So here the question is number of single bonds and number of double bonds. So let us count number of single bonds in the benzene molecule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have what nine single bonds. One, two, three. There are three double bonds. So the correct option is B. The gas liberated when sodium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. Now the chemical reaction involved here is like this. When sodium carbonate is treated with HCl, then NaCl is formed. Along with that, carbon dioxide gas is liberated. Now when this carbon dioxide gas is passed through calcium hydroxide, we will get a compound that is calcium carbonate, which is milky. white precipitate now if we further react this calcium carbonate with co2 which is nothing but excess of carbon dioxide then we will get calcium bicarbonate which is basically soluble and milkiness disappears so now here we have got carbon dioxide as a correct answer the common molecular formula for both cyclopropane and cyclopropane pin cyclopropane and propin now here is the structure cyclopropane has got three carbon atoms so the formula is going to be c3 and it has got six hydrogens so h6 and same is the case with propin as well three carbon atoms and six hydrogens so the common molecular formula is going to be c3 h6 the substance that changes the color of red litmus paper into blue so now those substances which are basic in nature are going to convert the red litmus paper into blue color so if you see the ph scale we understand that sodium chloride is basically neutral because it is a salt so ph is near about 7 lemon juice is acidic in nature so the ph will be less than 7 and pure water is more or less equal to 7 and here sodium hydroxide is a base whose ph is more than 7 because of which option d is a correct answer the amphoteric oxide among the following is so now what do you mean by amphoteric oxide amphoteric oxide is that particular oxide which is going to show both acidic as well as basic nature 
Now here are the some of the examples which are acidic in nature: carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, phosphorus pentoxide, and sulfur trioxide, and so on. And in case of basic oxides, we have Na2O, calcium oxide, and K2O, potassium oxide, sodium oxide. So in amphoteric oxide, these are the three prominent oxides. So now here we have got sodium oxide, which is basic in nature, zinc oxide, which is amphoteric in nature, and calcium oxide, which is basic in nature, and potassium oxide, which is also basic in nature. So the answer over here is zinc oxide. An alloy that made up of copper and tin. Now here are the some of the alloys which are there in your syllabus. Steel is basically made up of iron and carbon. And similarly, if you see bronze is basically copper and tin together. So now here the option is C. When a carbon dioxide reacts with calcium hydroxide, salts and water are produced. Now, what is the nature of the carbon dioxide? So as you all know, in case of neutralization reaction, we will get salt and water when acid and base react together. So calcium hydroxide is basic in nature and calcium carbonate is salt and H2O is water. So now this CO2 has to be in acidic in nature so that we get salt and water. So which means CO2 is acidic in nature. And here is the statement. Three elements were written in increasing order of the atomic mass. And the atomic mass of the middle element was roughly average of atomic mass of other two elements. So this is a law straight away you can go to option A. Why? Because according to Daubernier, let's take one example. Here we have lithium, sodium and potassium. So their atomic masses are 6.9, 23.0, 39 respectively. So if you take average of 6.9 and 39, then we will get near about 23. So which means this is what the Daubener is going to explain to all of us. Carbon has the ability to form bonds with other atoms of carbon giving rise to large number of molecules and this is the unique property that is catenation which is basically self-linking. Self-linking. So because of self-linking, it can form straight chains in this manner, it can form branch chains in this manner, or it can form rings as well. Like this. Here we have CH2, 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 and this way. So this property is basically catenation. Group of compounds which are in homo homologous series. So in order to understand whether the given compounds are in homologous series or not, we have to cross check these four important points, out of which first three are most important. So all of them must have same general formula. And then they must have similar chemical properties, which means having a same functional group. And adjacent members should differ by CH2. Let's see. Now when you talk about CH4, we have got one carbon, four hydrogens. So if at all, if at all I add CH2 to this, then I will get C2H6. And if at all I add CH2 to this, then I will get C3H8. So if you carefully observe, they are going to form they are going to follow one particular general formula that is Cn H2N plus 2. When I take n equal to 1, it is going to satisfy CH4. When I take n equal to 2, it is going to satisfy C2H6. When I take n equal to 3, it is going to satisfy C3H8. So all of them are form following same general formula and all of them are going to belong to alkane. 
So which means they are having same functional group and they differ, their adjacent members are going to differ by molecular formula CH2 which means A is the correct option. Number of periods and groups in a modern periodic table respectively. So here is the outline of modern periodic table. If you carefully observe, these are periods 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and these are groups 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Here we have 17th, here we have 18th. So the vertical, vertically what we see, they are groups and horizontally what we see, they are periods. So we have 7 periods and 18 groups. So here the answer is option A. Thank you so much. We'll meet in the next video.